Hello everybody, it has been some time, but I really wanted to get this one right because I have some really cool data on how we can use our do-it-yourself GPS base station, which I have been showing you how to set up in my previous videos to determine the position of our antenna within plus minus two millimeter, which actually is enough to determine the continental drift, which is really quite amazing. And if you would have told me that before I started to embark on this journey, I likely would not have believed you. So with that, let's get started. So this level of accuracy is achieved by using PPP or precise point positioning with ambiguity resolution, which means not only do we determine the phase of our signal, but also we remove the integer ambiguity in terms of what particular part of the wave we are on. And also we use atmospheric models to correct for the atmospheric disturbance, which is imparted onto the GPS signal. So in this video, I will rely quite heavily on my previous video where I have introduced the hardware of my do-it-yourself GPS station and how to set everything up. A link to those videos will be in the description. So if you have not done so, it may be a good idea to take a look at them first. However, if you use different hardware, I think this video still will be quite useful because it goes over quite a few of the more general principles of how to set up a base station for very precise positioning. In any case, before we get started, we have to talk about a couple of things which have been irrelevant if you have GPS positioning of meters for normal GPS or even RTK GPS where we're dealing with position of a couple of millimeters. And that is that if we deal with millimeter resolution, we no longer can treat the world as an unchanging sphere, which we have to do when we start going down to millimeter resolution. So for example, if you mount the base station on your roof, your house is not quite as rigid as you may expect it. For example, just thermal uh, expansion of your house may change the height of your house by a couple of millimeters between a hot day and a cold night. And so if we have millimeter resolution, this becomes important. And there's another problem which is even harder to get rid of, and that is continental drift. So for example, if you take a look at this website here, what you can see is that the continents drift away from each other. For example, the North American continental shelf is drifting west and uh, Europe is drifting northeast. And uh, those drifts are on the order of about 25 millimeters a year. So the length of this arrow here. And that means we are drifting about one inch each year apart. So if you then drift uh, 25 millimeters a year and you have two millimeter resolution, that is about the drift you can expect in a single month. And clearly this would be impractical if you would have to change the position of our base station each month just because of continental drift. So one option you have, you can actually reference your base station, not in a global reference frame, but for example, if you're in North America in a reference frame, which is specific to the North American shelf, and we can go into this website here and uh, take a look at that. And what you then can see that indeed our drift is much smaller, but particularly if you're in California, since California is a very geologically active region, there is distortion within the North American shelf. Which even if we use the appropriate reference frame, we cannot get rid of. And so what we then have to do, we not only have to tell our base station in what a reference frame we have recorded our data, but at what particular time the data has been recorded. And then we have models which model the distortion of the Earth over time, and we can then calculate back to the appropriate position if we know the time of our measurement. So there actually is a nice uh, YouTube video series, a uh, link will be in the description, uh, which goes into quite some detail on this topic. Yeah, feel free to check it out. However, what we then have to do, we have to record our GPS data for some time and then send it to a PPP service. And here you can see a report you, you're getting back if you send your data to one of those services here. And you can see here, I have started my recording of my data some days ago and have recorded for about one day and uh, nine hours. And then if you send your data to those services, they will report back the position of your antenna in terms of a reference frame. So here, this is the ITRF20, which is a global reference frame. And here is what is called the epoch, which is the year and a decimal of the year. This is the epoch 
meaning this is the time for which this particular data was recorded. And what you also can see here in this report is actually the, the tracks of the satellites which have been visible to my antenna over this recording period. All right, so in order to do that, you actually have to set up your GPS station to record what we call raw data. So here for the Unicore systems, this is the particular syntax to set up your base station. If you have a different base station, you have to consult your manual and the, the keyword you want to look for is raw observation data. So you have to send out the raw observation data, which contains the phase information of the received satellite signals to your antenna, which you then record and send out for post-processing. All right, so let me then show you how you can set up the Unicore UM uh, models for raw data recording. So if we go to our Uprecise software, again, this is the particular software I have been discussing in previous videos, and it works with my particular hardware. But any other high quality global positioning hardware will have very similar tools available. So as previously, the first thing we should do, we should send an F reset signal to our base station, just to make sure that we are starting with a fresh slate here and don't have any of the previous settings which may be interfering with our configuration. Then if you have the UM982 module, you would use the signal group for best results. Again, if your model is the UM980 module, you would use signal group 2 here instead of signal group 3 and 6. And we send the signal. Then we need to set our base station into base mode. I'm actually not sure if this is completely necessary, but I usually do. Make sure you're getting a valid response here each time. And now we need to configure our base station to send raw data with the OBS VMA command. And we only want to receive raw measurements every 10 seconds. So typically if we were going for position data, we want to have this maybe every second or maybe even faster. Raw data, you really don't want to record more of than about 10 seconds because the files will get quite large over the recording period of typically 24 hours. And actually, if your files is too large, the server will reject them. So 10 seconds is a good compromise here and actually doesn't degrade your data because we are only interested in the long-term average and not in the in instantaneous data here. So we're sending this command. And then we need to lastly save our configurations into the non-volatile memory in case we have a power outage. We don't want to lose those settings. And then you should see that now every 10 seconds you will get some signal here. Also, you can see we're getting our raw data here. And thus we have to save. And this is quite simple by pressing the save button here, navigate to an appropriate space, give it some name. So I typically provide the date here of my recording and click save. Well, I already have existing data here and I'm happy to overwrite those. And now you would let us run for about 24 hours. And after 24 hours, you can stop your recording here and navigate to the location where your file is saved. Right here, you will see your log data and thus data we then have to actually convert into a format which we can send to our post-processing service, which typically is the Linux data. So luckily, the service is also provided here in Uprecise. You go to the raw briefcase icon here and then under Convert, you will have this raw window pop up. And again, we have to then navigate to our data we just saved. And it will auto-populate all those fields here. And then we need to turn this into the Rhinox format here. And I usually use the latest format and say Convert. And since this was very Little data does went pretty quick. If you have recorded data for 24 hours, this will take a little bit, but you then should have those files here generated. And what I like to do, I like to compress them into a single zip folder. So send to compressed zip folder. And this then is the zip folder we want to send out for post-processing. And there are several free services available. I like to use the Canadian service, but other services are available. And again, a couple of links will be in the description. You can check them out. So here then is the website I like to use. You have to create an account with them and sign in. And once you're on their website, what I like to do, I you first have to decide in what reference frame you want your data to be processed. 
I like to use this international reference frame because I'm actually want to watch the drift of my antenna over time, monitor the continental drift. So I go to ITRF and then you just select the data we have just created right here and you would submit them for processing. And it will take some time and then they send you back an email with the processed data, which comes in the form of a PDF file. And here is a small part of the report they will send to you where you then get the precise location of your antenna with an accuracy of two millimeters in the horizontal direction and around one centimeter in the vertical direction. And again, they provide you the reference frame, which I selected the ITRF and the time for which the position was valid in this particular reference frame. So what we can do from that, we can take those data and plot it in features. So here is my antenna on my garage. And if you zoom in here, you can see that I have recorded data over some time. So I started late last year here in a, around Christmas time in 2024. And I have drifted over the course of about half a year. If you take just a measurement tool here, set us to millimeters, and I go from here to here, you can see that I have drifted around 12 millimeters over the course of about half a year, which if you compare it to the 25 millimeters, which is predicted for a year, is pretty much spot on. So one little caveat here, and that is that if you send your data out for post-processing, it takes some time for the atmospheric models to completely relax and be as precise as they can be. So this uh, data here is continental drift delayed, where I typically wait about 10 days or so before I send my data out for post-processing, because if I take a look here at the immediate data, which is pretty much sent out immediately after receiving the data, you can see that there is the continental drift is uh, hidden at least over this time span here. In any case, if you then want to use this very precise data as a reference for your base station, you should use this data which now still contains the continental drift and translate it into a reference frame which is commonly used for GPS stations in your geographic region. And for North America, this is the NDA83 reference frame. So if I open up this data here and zoom out a little bit, you can see that there is quite a discrepancy. And this is essentially where my base station would have been in 2010. And this is the data you, you provide as the actual location of your reference station if you want to set up a reference station for other people to use. So how we can translate our current data into this uh, reference frame is what I will show next. And again, there are free software tools available which let you do just that. And one of those services is provided by NOAA. Again, a link to the particular website will be in the description. And here we can translate individual points so I'm clicking on here. And now we have to select the reference frame of the input values, which in my case here is the ITRF20. And we also have to select the output value, which if you are in North America would be the NAD83 North American fixed plate reference frame and we have to provide the time or the epoch of when the data was recorded. This was 2025.5 and we want to use the epoch for which we want to translate our position to and a common reference frame which uh, base stations provide their position is the 20-2010 time. So we put 2010 in here and now we have to provide our latitude and longitude. We have to provide the latitude and longitude as they were provided to us by the PPP service. So let's put them in here in this particular format, which is recommended here. So we go 30, 15, 59.57925. And here actually, you have to follow this convention here if you are at negative coordinates, you have to provide a negative sign for it for each component here. So that would be minus 89, comma, minus 42, comma, and minus 37.64219 in my case. The height was negative 17.195. That's the same, I mean, 195. And then you can use the 
velocity predicted by those program unless you have access to more precise continental drift data, which I suspect you don't. And then we can simply submit. And we're getting an error here. And that is because this website is really quite sensitive in terms of how you input your data. There is no room for error. So let me go back. And the problem I have is that I have spaces here between my comma and my data. And this is enough to throw off the website. So let's get rid of all those spaces here and submit again. Now you have your data here as submitted in the ITRF 2020 reference frame. And here you have your data, which was converted into the NDA 83 reference frame. And the epoch here is 2000. And 10. And that then is the data you will provide to your reference station. So people who use your reference station for RPK correction have an agreed upon reference frame in which your reference station is configured. So I have put this here a little bit of a different slide. So here you have your ITRF 20, your NDA 83, and what you want to use, you want to actually use the ECEF coordinate system here, which gives you your coordinates from the center of the Earth in meters here. And you can see. We get it down to millimeter resolution. So those are the coordinates you would provide to your base station with the mode base command and you provide those coordinates to set up your base station. So let's do that as well. We're going back to view precise and now we want to again use a F reset to exit out of the raw data mode. We can configure our signal group based on the particular model of the UM980 or 82 we have and here it comes now we use those coordinates we have gotten from our PPP service in earth centered earth fixed we say mode base and we provide all those coordinates here say enter and now we can set up our base station for RTK correction data so we can provide our base station reference every 30 seconds we can provide an antenna description also every 30 seconds and then we want to provide the gps correction data every second the chinese correction data also every second again all those commands will be in the description the russian satellites every second and the chinese satellites sorry previously that was the european satellites not the chinese satellites and then if you save those configuration and if you're then interested in the position of your reference station use the GGA command, which can then put out the position of your reference station now in this fixed coordinate system we have precisely determined. All right, so I guess that's it. Now you have a reference station which has been located within a couple of millimeters and has been referenced to the correct reference frame, which now other people can use with confidence. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a like and consider to subscribe and I see you hopefully soon. Goodbye.